right, so we are here at Waters Garden Center. Today's class is on hydropenies and so and other companion plants. So peonies can be a little finicky, but they do really, really well here. And I've killed a lot of them, so I thought I'd share some things that uh, kind of will get you past some of that. Um, so we've changed up the garden classes. We're now at 3.30 on Friday just because... Oh, at three, yeah, sorry, three. I keep me on track, will you? <clears throat> yeah, I'm actually writing June Magazine Garden columns right now. It's just like, my brain is like out here, but I'm over here. Um, my name is Ken. I'm the owner of the Garden Center. I'm a second generation waters. I married Harold's youngest daughter. He had four daughters. I married the youngest and prettiest, Lisa. And so we've had four kids. And they've all grown up in the business. They know work ethic. They know how to, how to do stuff. They're good gardeners. Um, and three of them are working in the garden center in their 20s and 30s. So they're the next generation coming up. So that's, that's a lot. And then I'll point out my son-in-law, Jeremy, in the back. Hey, okay? He uh, married my oldest daughter. So they're coming into the business. They're from Austin, Texas. Former Austin. Now they're officially Prestonians. Welcome back home. Anyway, that's kind of the family business. This is our 59th year in business. And we just keep growing. As the community grows, we grow with it. It's kind of, that's just the way a small business is. And so this is a good year. Gardening is back. And it's big. It's like a resurgence. It's like um, the, the, the Victory Garden was a big deal. Then it took a little break. And then it then uh, back in 2009-10, came back again. Uh, Seems like every time the economy resets, gardening becomes a big thing. Only with COVID, it's become a really big thing because people are figuring out, hey, I can be safe in my backyard, I can be beautiful, and I can accessorize with, with, with my wife just bought a new sofa for the front yard. I mean, this is like a full on, it's expensive as my regular sofa in the house. It's outside, but it's comfy. So watch the hummingbirds, that kind of stuff. But that's kind of where nesting our homes. Part of that is flowers, color, fragrance, hummingbirds, butterflies. Uh, these are all the magic that happens in the garden and they're pretty easy to grow. Now peonies and annuals. There's those two things. Annuals live for one year, they die off in the winter. Perennials and permanent both start with P. They act year after year after year. So Got this beautiful, just go with this. This is an English peony. What color is that? This is a uh, Buckeye Bell. It's almost a black burgundy. English peony. This is the one that your grandparents grew. Like this. So it's a standard English peony. Uh, what they're doing <laughs> now, though, is they're having more color choices than ever. The foliage. They're starting to introduce foliage color. It's not just green with a with a basic pink or white flower. Now you're getting doubles, singles, blacks, reds, pinks, whites, yellows. Uh, so you're getting a lot of that. A peony is a perennial, in fact, every year, but it hibernates at the ground. So it actually will this actually you'll have a hard time figuring out where it is. It dies back to the ground going, uh, there it is. You'll see the stem you cut off. That's the only way you know now. Mine, probably three, four weeks ago, there was nothing showing. And then it just started doing this, and you can almost watch it grow by the day. Just grow. And within three weeks, this will be in full bloom. Lots of flowers about this big, just all over. Uh, peonies love the sun. Six hours plus, even of mountain sun, which is more intense. It likes more sun. More sun equals more flowers. Um, that's kind of one secret. People put them in the shade thinking they're delicate, but tough as nails. They got a real fleshy root to them. So that's what makes them so tough, um, so robust. Okay. So I got a little tickle in my throat. It's not COVID. I've had my two vaccines a month ago, <clears throat> but you can't, you can't. You can't have a runny nose anymore in today's world. you got to be paranoid of what people are thinking of. Anyway, just let you know. Um, 
So two things, the secret with peonies, here's what it comes down to. In fact, let me give you the handout. I've got a like four page handout, detail. How to grow peony, how to divide peony, when to divide peony, how to plant peony, how to fertilize peony. It is in depth. Uh, and it's way more than I can print out and just give you. So it's a link of PDF file, which you'll be able to open up on your phone, your iPad, desktop, whatever, print out. Uh, give me your email and, and you'll have that shortly. There's also another handout I was going to give you. Because peonies are so rabbit resistant, elk resistant, deer resistant, things don't seem to bother me. They look delicious. I want to take a bite. A little ranch dressing, just like celery, but there's a there's the sap in them just makes it really bitter. I didn't like that. It's just super I've got a hardcore contestant, I can tell you that. They're right down in Skull Valley, on it, on Kirkland Creek where herds of elk roam free. And they would eat this. It's great. So the other one that you have to really watch, uh, this needs to be cold. It likes winter. So don't bury it too deep. You, don't, you want it to be in the frost line. So this should really be the top of your garden soil. A mistake many people make is they'll bury them too deep. And now they don't get that chill factor they need. They need that to rejuvenate their, their flowers. And so they want to be, they want to be minus 30. They want to be cold. So, and they're not damaged by that at all. So that's one thing. The other thing people seem to do is these eyes will come up, they're really, really sensitive. If you bury this stem in any kind of dirt, it's gonna crown rot on you. It's gonna get a, a bacterial thing that'll, that'll cause issues. So important, leave this at the top of the garden soil. Don't be tempted. You can kind of maybe mulch over top of that, but don't put a lot of dirt in garden soils or you'll have issues. It won't bloom well. It'll bloom shorter. Not as many flowers. Get kind of yellow to you. It just has these issues. It'll, it'll live because they're so tough, but they just won't thrive. We're planting this for those flowers. So another kind of... of uh, uh, this is called an Ito peony. So there's basically three kinds, four kinds of peonies. English peonies, most common, most famous, the one in front of magazine covers, because everyone knows what they are, and they're introducing new colors every year. There's a fern leaf peony. Um, we don't really sell that one here, because they don't like dry, they don't like wind, they don't like alkaline, they don't like the mountains of Arizona. They just seem to struggle and wither, and they curl, and they dry up. They're just more struggle than they work. No matter how much you water, can't keep them alive in this dry soil, so we don't offer them. Uh, we'll have tree peonies. This is a big woody shrub. It's big. We really don't sell those either. Uh, the wind it just breaks them, snaps them, causes issues. They're really, really hard to grow. You might see one every once in a while around. But they're really hard to grow. And so we're not going to try to sell you something that's really hard to grow. Just get struggled and stop gardening. So um, then you've got what's called Ito peonies, where they grafted a English peony onto a tree peony root. And what you get is a peony of steroids. I mean, literally, it is like a shrub this big. I mean, and you get the freakishly weird flowers, just big flowers, yellows, apricots. The really funky colors you can't get anywhere yet, any other way, that'll be an Ito peony. Um, and they do what they say. They are stunning. Flowers are three times, they're as big as your hand. And they're more fragrant than an English peony. So it's literally like a peony in um, Another thing about all perennial, but especially peonies, um, they got to be a certain age before they bloom. They're typically going to be three, four, this is probably five years old. Before it, now it's finally old enough to, <coughs> this will be up, literally this big, this season, with dozens of flowers on it, because it's finally old enough. If you plant this by root, it would be minimum three to four years before this actually would start to flower for you. 
your English peonies typically need to be two, three, four years old before the, so this, this peony is probably three years old. And we're bringing in older specimens just because people don't shop here to, to wait. They, they shop instantaneous gratification. I'm not gonna wait for fruit tree to put apples on, I want them now. I don't want peonies in three years, I want them this year. So we purposely grow on, hold the crops, and mature them on so that they're more mature. That's also another reason that you'll find that, that perennials are typically more expensive than annuals. Annuals are typically by seed or cutting. This is like trivia that probably doesn't even matter, but while I'm on a roll, it's interesting. Um, annuals are started by seed or cuttings, and they're typically anywhere from six to maybe 12 weeks old. So you get a lot of turn, you get a lot of crop rotations um, out of the greenhouses. So they're typically cheaper. A perennial is minimum. At here, at ours, almost all the perennials are at minimum two years old. We planted these last year and harvested them this year. So the farmers are just holding on to them far, far longer. So typically, for a good one that's going to bloom for you, they're probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Better, just plant them once and they'll keep blooming. The other thing about peonies is they are ancient. They will live, they will outlive all of us. They are, they live a long, long time. So really take the energy to plant them where they're going to be for decades. I mean, it's not unusual to have a, a peony live 50, 60, 70 years. And, and they're passed down from generation to generation. They're cuttings, biting, so they're, they're, they're so old, they're passed down to different gardeners. So they're, they're that kind of plant. So prep that soil accordingly so it doesn't run out of that garden, garden soil. I can, I can attest, I have killed several peonies, and here's how I kill them every time. They have such a fleshy root that if they sit in heavy clay soil, this is where that Prescott thing to come. If they have like a Prescott Lakes, who's in Prescott Lakes right here? That heavy clay soil is really rough on them. And so if they sit in clay soil, they'll sit there and they might bloom for one year and then they just rot in the winter. Typically I find they die like in March. They have those heavy, wet snows gets that soil's gooey, it's hibernating, trying to breathe, and it just drowns and doesn't come back the next year. You dig it up and it's just sit, it's in the ground, rotted. So watch that one. Really, drainage is key, your peonies especially. They're very drought hardy. For me, what I've done is I'll grow them in raised beds because now I'm out of the soil. I'm, I'm just bringing all my own soil in. Or I grow this particular uh, uh, peony in a great big red pot. Okay. The pot is his is art. It's right there by the front door. I'm trying to hide the uh, downspouts, hardware that comes off the roof, right there by your front door. I got a got a very expensive, very nice, glorious front door. And I got all these tubes coming down. That is not pretty in my room. And so I just put the big pot, and this is a big peony, so it's gonna get up tall. So by the time I get done, it's standing this tall uh, at the front yard, right there on the patio in the pot. It's been in there for probably five, six years. And it just comes back every year for me, really easily. With containers, I would say, brought one pot. Let's see if I can do this with the folks on camera. We realize you're here on Facebook. I'm not going to ignore you. We're trying to include you in this. So let me show you. How many people do we have online? You got that, Jeremy? 16? Oh, good. I'm glad all 16 of you are there. If you got a question, go ahead and type it in. And if you would, take a moment and hit the like button because uh, Facebook, they like have these algorithms that like put you, especially the little guys, they put us behind like this iron wall that you can't get through. But if your friends and family and friends kind of like, type in, ask a question, they instantly rank you higher. They just kind of go, okay, they must be important. People are actually, they're engaged, shunk, and they put you right to the top. So um, do that right now. Take a moment. We're just going to all wait here. Even our VIP customers, our virtual person, you all are definitely uh, priority. Uh, you should come into the garden center too. You can't see these. You can't smell them and touch them. Anyway, this would be the minimum size pot 
I would grow up eating uh, because you're going to have them for years. You're going to be in there for, for a decade, more. And so the more soil, the bigger, the better. Mine is twice the size. I would say this would be the minimum size for an English bee. I don't know that I would plant an Utopia, the great big boys. I'd probably go to the next size up uh, for that because it's going to be so many. What's that? How many gallons? It's probably about 10 gallons or so. So the question online was, how many gallons? It's this big, this many gallons. So you kind of get a feel. Probably about 10 gallons, like a 10 gallon tree. Okay. What I do is I'll actually put my peony in the backside and I'll put like pansies or petunias or geranium, something that trails over. Uh, I like um, alyssum. It's really, really pretty with that big lacy foliage. Um, even without a flower, the peonies are beautiful. Because the foliage is so pretty. And the flower is kind of like frosted. And so the extra flowers on the edge, softening that edge, looks really good. So that's the reason I brought this, just size of pot. So we do actually grow a lot of peonies in containers. There is actually a delay. You all hear about that ship that's that, uh, stuck in the Suez Canal? That's actually backing up the uh, supply chain. All the pots, like these are all Vietnamese pots, we like Vietnamese pots. They're thicker, heavier clay. It's a better quality clay. And they have the kilns. The Chinese tend to take shortcuts. They'll send them to the kiln too fast, so there it's hard. And so the Chinese never take shortcuts. The Vietnamese never take shortcuts. Well, now these 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 containers are being backlogged by at least six weeks. We actually really don't know. Uh, and you have to order full containers of pots. It's not like you just order a pallet. And if you three of those, two of those, have them there next week. That does not happen. So we're finding there's this backlog that's starting to happen. If you're thinking about pots, especially matching pairs, um, get them now. Because there's no more pots coming until the summer, and I don't know how late they're going to be. They'll be delayed. There's no price increases right now that I know. It's just being delayed. So if you're trying to have matching by your front doors, or garage, or back patios, grab them while there's still selection, because this is the 2021 selection. We fully intended to restock two more times, once in the summer, once in the fall. And I don't know how this is going to delay things. So another little trivia. So while we're on trip, you want to know the real inside scoop of what's going on with the economy, um, at least with gardeners. So we, we're in a group called the Garden Center Group. There's 140 of us. We're all independent garden centers. And uh, we know we can't do it on our own. I mean, we're Prescott, Arizona. How do you get a feel for what's going on? You need friends. And so we formed this co-op. All the greatest, the best consultants in the country belong to this. They're, they're on retainer and call the HR, marketing, facilities, whatever. And, uh, and then we share our numbers every week. Exactly what Florida sold, how many they're selling, what's going on. And here's what's going on. Garden centers are up 52% over a record year last year. They're outstripping the supply. So the demand is so great that they, we didn't grow enough tomatoes, enough apple trees, enough apricots, enough roses, enough. We didn't grow enough. And so what's going to happen, what's happening right now, is we're going through that spring crop that we, we grew, and we've sold all that. You can't have nothing. You're going into spring camp. You can't have nothing. So now we're dipping into the summer crop. What's going to happen is there's going to be inflation. It's not going to be in price. What's going to happen is... You'll have a, a salvia, a rosa sharon, a crepe myrtle. You're dipping into that summer crop. Normally, we'd leave it there at the farm for another three months to mature. We're harvesting it now. So you'll, you're in about six, seven weeks, eight weeks. Um, you're going to find the same price, which is not inflation price-wise, but the plants are really small. So you're, you're paying more for a smaller plant just because the demand is so great. You can't, you can't, you can't grow it fast enough. Really, that's what's going on. So we're struggling. I think we're set on our end. We planned well enough because I knew, I saw this coming. What I don't want is a crop failure that I got to go out and find more someplace else that isn't there. Anyway, that's what's, how did I go down that path? So anyway, my name's Ken. I own the place. That's where I'm at. Oh, what? what? Oh, peonies. Yeah. Yeah, peonies. Ah.
So, um, peonies. You now know how to grow peonies. There you go. Fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. They're heavy feeders. And this will be in that handout that you get. It goes over the food. I'm not going to go over how to divide them because that's more of a fall thing. Divide them in the fall. Right before you, as they're dying back to this beautiful fall color, um, you'll cut them back. You'll water them really good. You'll dig them up. Slice them in two. It'll hurt your soul. And then you go plant them elsewhere. You're probably doing that every 10 years or so. Okay? The plants will tell you. They'll get too big, too woody, stop blooming well. You're going, oh, it's probably time to divide them. And that's your cue. And that'll, that'll be in the handout how to do that. Uh, fertilizing, though, you need to fertilize more regularly. What I do with uh, my pot, this stuff grows amazing peanuts. Anything in a container, this grows amazing peonies. For the love of gardening, please do not use that miracle grow. I can't believe I said that out loud in my nursery. Don't use that garbage in a box. I know it's cheap. It's really not that cheap. Uh, but it's salt-based fertilizer. It's going to work with our water. It just creates more damage than good. You'll see this heavy cake, white buildup on the containers. It's because it's working with our soil, our water, which is very heavy in minerals. Now you're adding more minerals, and it just kind of, and it really doesn't grow tomatoes the size of your head. It doesn't do what it says. And so it's, we stopped selling that 10, 12 years ago, because people are just doing more damage than good to that. That's a hard call, because it's an easy sell. It's one of those stack it high, watch it fly, count the money. But if it's not the right product, it just can't do it within myself. Now, think how easy the money is. This competes with that, but it's not salt-based. So it's actually in a form of you know, hanging baskets with big flowing flowers. Use this a couple times a month on your containers, raised bed, things that bloom. And you'll almost have to stop doing it at the end of the year because it'll be so big, so flower. It'll be so covered in flowers, you just can't, you can't see the plant. It's just covered. It really does that. It's a formula we made for here. For our plants, we'll work with our water. So flower power is how I do my um, during the growing season. Growing season for for uh, uh, peonies are April through October. Do it then, and then you kind of let it go rest for the winter. If it's in the ground, I'll use probably not the flower power. I use I use the seven four four all purpose food to make a granular food. It's organic. I would sprinkle that on. Or three times a year minimum. So I do it Easter, Fourth of July, but for the grades of monsoons kind of hit. Um, then I do the most important feeding for peonies, especially Halloween. That fall feeding, when you see the fall color, um, the, the burning bush, the aspens have turned, turned golden, the burning bush has that bright red, the maples are turning, that's your cue. Fertilize, <coughs> Fertilize peonies. Lilacs, recipients, plants, things that bloom, anything, fruit trees. Anything that's going to bloom and fruit, fertilize in October, the most important feeding. And again, that will be on that handout exactly when and what to use. Yeah. Okay. Let me think. And I think that's how you grow peonies. It's not that hard. It's just one little plant. Make sure you get drainage. Don't bury it too deep. It likes to be cold. Give it enough sun. Fertilize like crazy. That is in a nutshell. How you're guaranteed to have nice, nice people. Questions? Yep. So, a peony, or so the question was when can you transplant from one pot to another? You're almost too late because we're starting to see the eyes elongate. But if you could get out underneath it, pick it up and move it, you could do it now. Ideally, when you move peonies in the autumn, autumn October, November, December, kind of that time frame, because they're so dormant, they just aren't growing. So you can't make a mistake. Now, if you try to move it, you're guaranteed going to break off some of those eyes, some of those stems coming up because they're tender. Um, so if you can do it gently, that you just depends on the shape of the pot, that kind of stuff, you do it now. Okay, so. If you can't do it now, wait till October. Golden. And when you transplant it, transplant it, use, uh, we make a product on it called Root. Uh, 
uh, it helps the transplant shop. It's a, it's a composted tea that helps uh, plants reproduce. It's like opening our surgery and take a pot out of it. Plant out of this pot, it, it didn't know what to do. It just, it's just confused. It's like, it's like open our surgery and brain surgery at the same time. It's hard on a plant. So that kind of plot it helps it stabilize and kind of get, get, get established. Companion plants. I brought some things that go together with peonies. And I grouped them by shade lovers, by sun lovers. Because there's, there's two kinds of gardens. Why don't I start from the left, work this way, and then uh, I'll end with kind of some secrets I found that really work to bring the most out of those things that work. I'm a flower guy. I love, that's my thing. That's my kryptonite. I just, I just love flowers. I can't, I can't go away. And so I grow a lot of flowers. We've got over 50 containers, all filled with flowers. And then there's, flowers. Then there's raised beds. We like flowers. We own a garden center. We can do that. So we did that before we owned a garden center. We just like flowers. Um, two things. These guys are definitely companion plants. This is one of my favorites right here. Doesn't look like much, but it will in about two, three weeks. This is a hardy gardenia. There are certain, there, gardenias are a large family of plants and not all of them do well here. Uh, but the, the, we got a couple of them, it's called frost. There's two varieties that will grow that we bring in that winter over. This is an evergreen. This is how mine looks in a container on the back patio the cold on the north side of my house. It's beautiful. Uh, and it's starting to set flower buds. Within a couple of weeks, it'll have little flowers about like this all over it. You know, just keep doing that for months. And it has that sweet fragrance that you, that you like with your little gardenias. A companion to that, now this doesn't get that big. It's like this big. Um, it does more shade than sun. I notice it takes a lot of sun, though. But it doesn't bloom as long. I find it does better in like morning sun. It'll bloom longer for you. Um, anyway, just some personal things that I found work for me. I think it'll help you all. This is Lily the Valley. Again, Lily the Valley, big family of plants. This guy, because it's got waxy, heavy, thick leaves, takes, it grows here really well in the shade. So I wouldn't give this any more than six hours of sun. It's famous for, it's been, it's been blooming for over a month. It loves the cold. It's a winter bloomer. Fragrant. Bees like it. There's a pollinator. It's evergreen. It's kind of got everything you want, and it's bright. Whereas many times in the shaded area of the gardens, it's hard to find something bright enough. Dark colors are easy, and then it gets darker. Kind of lighter, brighter flowers and colors, foliage looks it's easier to design one the shape of the gardens. Throw a container in the ground, wherever you want it, it's gonna look for yours. Okay. Lily of the Valley. <laughs> Alright. This right here. Two plants to go with that. And we're done with the shade stuff. Isn't that fun? The azaleas opened this week. I mean that just, just happened this like two days ago. It just started happening. So you're seeing rhododendrons, azaleas, again, big family of plants. Not all are hardy here. So you kind of want to be careful of those California varieties. We have a lot of Phoenix, California influence, and they do not want to over plants. We're a zone seven. You need plants to go zone seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, eight, cold hardy. Get into zones eights, nines, tens. Those are not cold hardy here. They're more desert varieties. And so they'll they might live through a mild winter, and then if we get a cold winter, it just kills it right off. You're thinking you don't have green thumbs. It was not you. You were sold the wrong thing. You should not be wrong. So you kind of want to do a little research on your azaleas and rhodes. Rhodes a little less so. Azaleas are more, I just want to, I see some mistakes. I just scratch my head when I go to competitors and go, where are these? Where are they selling? It does not even make sense. Um, this guy is... Columbine. There's actually columbines grow wild here. There's a yellow variety. Um, and yellow's fun. Once you've grown it, it's kind of like, okay, I've done it. What else? What else is exciting? 
So we're coming out, this is called Songbird Series. Um, comes out in blues, yellows, reds, oranges. There's a lot of colors. They're just fun. Perennial. It comes back every year. Uh, and it tends, to, I, it says when you read the research, grows in full sun. Again, I don't find it does well. It, it will grow in full sun, but it won't bloom very long. Give it some, some shade in the middle of the day. The blooms will last far, three, four, five times longer. Uh, and you, it'll take virtually almost really little water. They're almost drought hardy. Again, it's a native. So, Columbine, songbird Columbine. That's the shade stuff. Now we'll shift to sunny, sunny things. And these are things that need at least six hours of sun or more. Now, our definition of sun, because the altitude, um, it doesn't, it's not full sun. Full sun is full sun. But six hours is also full sun. My best gardens for flowers is on the east side of my house. I get sun from dawn, from five to six o'clock in the morning, till noon, one, maybe two o'clock, and I get some relief at the end of the day. My gardens just go crazy. East side of a wall, east side of the trees. I also noticed that underneath, directly underneath my canopy of a tall tree, is really well. Because I get morning sun, midday relief, into the day sun. It's a cumulative six hours. It doesn't, it's not all at once, just throughout the day, six hours or more, these guys will bloom. This is Salvia regii, or autumn sage. It's most famous in red. Mostly you'll see red, red, red. I've got two or three colors of red down there. I've got a white, hot lips. It's white with a red, kind of like lipstick around the edge. This is called ignition purple. Very unusual uh, to see purple in the south. Uh, but again, hummingbirds, they, they're going to be all over this. Literally, when we're moving them into stock, they'll follow us through the garden center. It's literally that bad. It's ridiculous. They're like ridiculous, like heroin. For, for hummingbirds. Butterflies are like a little bit, bumblebees sometimes. It's like hummingbirds love that. Um, gets up about knee high, a little bit over knee high or so, in a ball shaped. Um, it is deciduous. It is, it'll lose its leaves in the winter, so it's not evergreen. So it'll lose its leaves, kind of go dormant. But it's a woody, it's a woody perennial. You keep the stems up, it's gonna come back from these stems and relief. So it doesn't rest underneath the ground, it rests back to the core of the plant. That's what it says. Call it herbaceous. Anyway, this is lavender. I saw lots and lots of lavenders. This is an unusual one because almost all lavenders are are like violet or purple colors, blues. You never see pink. Um, in fact, you'll only find this. Yeah, you heard me. Water scarred and there you go. It's just a new, new, fun, different. Again, we get bored, but let's try, let's try these. This is a Spanish lavender. We also have French lavender, English lavender. It depends on what you're doing with it. This is kind of the variety you're seeing in front of magazines because it has the biggest flower in it. But really for potpourris, for some that have better fragrance, the, the English and the, the um, French, kind of a, a brighter, lavender smell to it. Um, so if you're doing things with that for oils and that kind of stuff, they're better. It has got kind of a tall, wispy kind of flower to it. They're pretty, they blow in the wind, but look at that pink, pink lavender. True hardcore perennials. This one's new. This is called uh, Spin Top Red. Galardia, or, or um, coneflower, is what your grandparents call it. But Galardia, again, it's a native, it was wild, we use it in seed mix, but it's almost always orange or yellow. To see red, super, super unusual. Uh, a secret with this, again, it's got a very drought hardy. Animals will not bother this, they don't eat it. Rabbits, deer, pet rabbits, they leave it alone. The secret with this, when it gets done blooming, I'll pinch this head off. It's going to be set for another flower, just like that. It's nonstop from April through September, nonstop flowers. 
I'm also a bird gardener. So what I'll do is about August, I'll let it go to seed. I'll purposely stop pinching it for dead heading. And I'll let this flower go to seed and I'll use it as a food source for my little birds that wander over with me. They'll go over and you'll just see little sparrows over there. I'm not gonna lay at it. Oh, welcome to my yard. Glad you're here. So it's great perennial for here. If it's a companion plant to this, this is candy tuck. And it looks so delicate. But this is tough as nails. We'll use this at rock gardens. It's that tough. Full sun. Virtually evergreen. And extremely early bloom. When it gets some blooming, cut it back, fertilize it, it'll go right back to the weeds. You get three or four blooms like this a year. Great perennial for you. Disease resistant. Nothing really goes wrong with this. This is a great little light plant. And when you mix this with things like reds and whites, white makes every other color pop. So by itself, not quite as good, and it's pretty. The second you put another color with it, it just shines, the magic happens. That's how you design really lights or light pinks, that kind of stuff. This and these, I kind of use these the same. This is meadow sage. I use this a lot in my yard um, because it's a wildflower. Plant one, you never get one. You're going to get multiples and it's going to spread. You got that hillside, you know, driveway with that rock yard is eroding away. Put this at the top of the hill. By next year, you're going to have a, a, a spilling, overflowing thing of sage. Uh, hummingbirds like it, it's a pollinator. Normally, again, it comes in blue. Purple. Uh, this one's pink. I just have never seen it before, so I know I'm talking to gardeners. At the end of the day, Friday, you could be out having Mexican food and margaritas. You're at a garden class. That says something about you. Uh, so I had to bring something different. Pink. So this is a pink and bright meadow sage. Anytime you hear the word sage or salvia, they're all related, uh, and they're going to be herbal, which means animals aren't going to bother them. They have a very heavy scent when you rub the foliage has a sagey scent to it, which javelina, they're not gonna even think about bothering this. It's, it's distasteful to me. This one, I don't even know what this is. Flocks, creeping flocks. So it's a great perennial. Just gets this big and it just does this, spreads like a carpet, like a mat throughout the gardens. Very tough and very early bloomer. Uh, so it'll start blooming like this and very long bloomer. For a perennial. Usually perennials bloom for about six weeks and they're done. If you're trying to design, I need some spring perennials, some summer perennials, my mums at the end of the season, asters, and I want to have things always rotating through, blooming. Sometimes it's nice to just put one and be done and it just blooms the whole time. The problem with that is it can be a little boring because it's all the same flower all the time. When you get some spring bloom or summer bloom, you get some change ups, some differences. Um, anyway, creeping flocks. This might be my favorite perennial. Doesn't look like much now, but I like, this is actually related in one sentence. This is Rainbow Ascot Euphorbia. Euphorbia is the name that Poinsettias uh, use as well. They're, they're related cousins. And when you pinch off a, a stem, you have that same white kind of sap to it, which makes it impervious to anything that's any mammal. Javelina, they don't bother this. Rabbits don't bother. And it's this beautiful base shape, about like this big, evergreen. Ever, it's one of the few evergreen true perennials that'll take full sun, blistering hot. It doesn't quite bloom. It's actually starting to bloom. If you get a chance, come up afterwards. There's some flowers on this. You'll see a few flowers here. I'll do this. You'll see a few flowers. Just starting here, I'll let you folks on Facebook. It's just like a Dr. Seuss flower. Can you see that? Can you see that on the camera? Oh, like, who should be in here? What are you doing now? Yeah, that's great. Don't go to the out, don't go to the refrigerator yet. I got another five minutes. Uh, anyway, it's kind of kind of I mean, you should take that and pass around to so you know about the saps. Don't get on your clothes. It's sticky. It's got kind of an unusual, see that? It's starting to, to bleed out. That's why the animals don't like it, because that sap tastes 
Um, really, really bad makes a bitter taste. But blistering hot sun, I've had this in a container for years, and now it's magnificent. Put it behind a sunlight, like a sunset or something. Watch the glow of this, this bright yellow. It's really, really pretty. It's hot. You just can't it. Rainbow Ascot Euphorbia. Three more, and then I'll tease you. You know what this is? California poppy. I think they named it wrong. If I had to do it over, I'd call it an Arizona poppy. His entire hillsides would be filled with this plant. Um, just, I don't know, it's what you get. Perennial, it reseeds like crazy, does well. You count on it. Just does well. Animals seem to leave it alone. Um, poor thing. Actually, I had a staffing on Thursday. These came in on Thursday. Thursday. I had a staff, you know, training the staff. At the end of the day, after close, I had a whole tray of these. And we're going to training until about 6.30 or so. Starting to get a little dark. A little, a little, uh, dark. But the uh, California poppies were putting themselves to bed. They were closing up. Just kind of closing up, going, okay, I'm done. I'll open up tomorrow. And this morning's come. They're just very personal. I just want to name them. This is, anytime you hear carnation, pinks, um, what's another name? Pinks, carnations, uh, daffodils. Anyway, um, oh, dianthus. They're all related. So great evergreen perennials. This has foliage. It looks like this year round. It's an early bloomer. Oh, and where'd that come from? Could you block that for me over there? It's coming this way. <laughs> um, I like this because it's evergreen. It has a really long bloom cycle. And you'll notice that the foliage is blue. That's an indication that animals aren't going to like. They don't like the color blues. They don't like uh, there's a secretion that they throw on top of the foliage to make the, the foliage taste bitter. So it doesn't really smell. It doesn't really smell. It's just pretty. This one I do use as a decoy. This is society garlic. And I've got Havelina herds that ravage the front yard. And they like to jump up on my pots. It's just, they're just a pain. The backyard, they're fenced much easier. Here, um, I'll try to get this way. I know that's irritating you folks online. Sorry. It's part of the wind outside of the microphone. Society garlic actually smells like garlic. You're not going to harvest the garlic, really. It's just made to be pretty and so but it's got a very long bloom cycle and i'll plant this in the middle of let's say pansies or geraniums or petunias that are likely to be eaten by things and it makes it all smell like garlic the negative my wife will not let me put this by the front door because she doesn't want the whole house smelling like garlic every time you open up the door coming in and out so out, out, <laughs> out there it does it's a good way to kind of hide some of that scent, some of the things they like to eat. And it's just pretty. It's a pretty thing. Lastly, this came in today. Um, milkweed. Milkweed. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Milkweed uh, actually does run the migratory path for monarchs, swallowtails, painted ladies, uh, and birds. So we're just, they're from the waterways up up here. And so if you put this out there, you will have butterflies. It's kind of guaranteed. And it's just a really pretty plant. It's on an interesting seed pod. It has a real silky kind of seed pod to it. It's just a great pretty plant. I use it as a backdrop effect over to do this. Could I design real quick? i probably do this. Full sun. Dun, dun, dun. There's a container garden right there with all perennials. Full sun. Every one of these. Full, full sun. Yep. Yeah. Milkweed. These will be gone by Sunday. Guaranteed. It's, it's the first crop. People have been asking for them. Um, there's a whole, there's a butter, butterfly people. I mean, gardeners are nuts. Butterfly gardeners are really nuts. So they just go on steroids about all things butterflies. So they like those plants. Okay, I told you I'd give you a secret on getting things to bloom. Especially shrub things like... Uh, Salvias, autumn sage, uh, 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 Russian sage, 
things that have a long, long bloom cycle, sometimes they take a break. I notice my uh, boomerang lilac. It's a dwarf repeat blooming lilac. Um, if you don't fertilize it enough, it won't repeat bloom. It's a big shrub. If you fertilize it enough, it seems to go. What I do, I brought this. I always buy a big bag of this. Super phosphate. This is 0 -0. This is not in the handout, so you can take notes. Or just ask me later. Ken, you were telling me something I forgot because I didn't have my phone to write it down with. Super phosphate is sort of like a Snickers bar for plants. It's just a quick pick me up. I just need, I just need a, a sugar rush. And I'll bloom some more. And so I'll go through, and about every other month, I'll chuck a handful of this down. Base of my plants, I don't work it in, just chuck it on. Um, and as I irrigate, as it gets moisture, as we get rain, it breaks down. And phosphorus, 0, 18, 0, that middle number is what forms fruits, roots, blossoms. Want more flowers, more fruits, more roots, give it phosphorus. If you can front load these repeat bloomers, force them to repeat But if you get a big peony or a big salvia, it's had you know, hundreds of blooms on it, two months. So quickly use this up and run out of food. So it just turns into this green blob. And so that's one little secret I'll do about every couple of months. Just go through it and I'm like the, I'm like the phosphorus fairy. Here you go, have some more, bloom some more for me, bloom some more. There you go. Bugs are going to come out, things are blooming. That means thrip and aphids are probably next week. They're coming, I'm just warning you. Just be ready. You see aphids on things, this is the greatest organic ever. Just, I always keep one of these in the shelf in my garden shed. And I see bugs on my peonies. Uh, ants growing up peonies, that's a myth. Do, ant, do you need ants to have peonies open up? That is, no, that's hog food. That is not, they do not need ants. That is just a wall lifestyle. They don't need ants. The reason <laughs> that they'll form a flower and they keep kind of black um, stems on it, black tips sometimes, rip, get down in there in spring, and start eating the flower from the inside out. And that causes that, looks like you take a quick lighter to it sometimes. That's rip. And so from my peonies, I spray this on there where the flowers are for their damage. And this is neem oil, in neem. Uh, it's got a fragrance to it that they don't like. It's got a repelling action. Then it also has a contact kill. So if you hit an aphid, hit a thrip, it kills them as well. I use it more as a defense for things I know you can have problems with. So peonies are kind of one. We're going back to peonies. It's one way to kind of guarantee they open up without that black uh, charred thing. And then my real insider secret. Because I do a lot of containers, everything I plant, Put a little bit of this aqua boost in the bottom of the hole. These are our garden polymers. Uh, polymers are, they swell up and hold like 200 pounds of weight in water. And then we've infused these, <coughs> excuse me, infused them with mycorrhizal polymers. So mycorrhizals are those things that live in the soil, and help the plants communicate to root, to grow. So it helps, you've got a product that holds moisture right there at the root and encourages more roots. That's what we need more of in Arizona. So if you've had a hard time watering, keep things moist, you've got a lot of raised beds um, where you just have to water so often, you've got a lot of pots, all my containers have some of this. It, it'll, it'll reduce, it'll cut your water needs in half, literally. The challenge is, I know gardeners. We're very generous people. Some of you, you're not gardeners, you're waterers. You just love going out with your coffee and that's your thing. What it's like a, it's like yoga with a hose. You're out there watering your plants. You can overwater things if you're not careful. Give them this and you water too much. You can you can water too much. If you all travel a lot, RV folks, put in your house plants. It'll cut that it'll make your house plants go for two, three, four weeks. You can go on that cruise whenever we're cruising. Hopefully. I did book my first trip to Disney in November. It's kind of a crapshoot, going for it. 
I don't think Israel's letting America's in yet, but they will because they got my card. I'm going to take a picture of it. I'll get my passport, whatever I need to get in the country. I'm going to go watch Petra and all that stuff. You know, and then are my boys. And uh, I wear my, my army hat in honor of my son. He's in the army. He's a physician's assistant for the First Armor Division. They just rebased him. He's going to be taking care of all the soldiers in a Patriot missile defense in Europe, Germany. Rombaum, get that right? Rombaum, Germany, I think. So I don't know where that is. I know it's by Switzerland and Austria. And it's closer to, to Paris than it is to Berlin. But I'm going and doing it all. Anyways, in there, we're very proud of it. So anyway, Aqua Boost Crystals, that will take the edge off. When I plant tomatoes, anytime you get that crack in the tomatoes, that's because of water. It goes from moist in the morning till dry at night. And then that's, that fruit does this, and it, it gets a crack. And this takes that crack. It gets that it evens out the moisture, so you're less likely to have thick skins, cracking kind of stuff. So it's a really good product for, for our gardens. So every time I plant a tree, that's kind of my insider. This really works, which you don't really care about anywhere else. But Aqua Boost Crystals really work. That I'll answer questions. Just hang and get to your questions. We'll just kind of, and my goal every year, every class, I just want you to have three takeaways. You can do three things. Something you can write down and it work. We put it in use this week. It'll make a difference. I think that's a good class. That's what I'm trying to part enough. Sometimes it's overwhelming. Come back. We're here for you. We like talking gardening all the time. So questions? Anyone online? What's up? Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, no, I would say if you could do, if you could lift your your peony up. Uh, now, if it's planted a little bit too low, it's pretty easy to get in the garden, take a shovel and kind of kind of root prune is what we call it, around the edge. And maybe take a couple of shovels and lift it up and throw some potting soil underneath it. That'll ensure some drainage, kind of increase drainage. Uh, I think you'll, you'd have great success with that. Do it right away because they're growing like that. They're growing crazy. They're growing right now. So if you wait another week or two, they're going to be twice their size. Now it's really awkward. I'd probably recommend for you, before you lift, come in and get a, a bottle of root and grow. Again, that's going to help with that transplant shock. Because you're going to break some roots when you do that. It's going to go into shock. We want it to bloom. Um, ideally, if you could wait until, until like October, that's best. But sometimes you do what you got to do because we're gardeners do this. So, good question. Very good question. What else? There we go. I love the folks online. Thanks for answering, asking questions. It makes us look good at Facebook's and Mark Zuckerberg does control our social and advertising connected worlds. Unfortunately, I think that's not true. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> good. Red tip botania. Did I get that right, Patricia? So red tip botania is a beast. I mean, small dogs, small children, dogs have been lost in red tip botania. They're just big. They're aggressive. I would never plant one in my yard. Too much maintenance. If there's ten bugs in the area. They'll get fifteen of them. They always get mildew. Deer will eat them. And they just grow too fast. So I think there's a better choice. But it's number one seller. Put my kids through college by selling red tip Um So, what do you do? I would cut them back dramatically. They're getting overgrown. It sounds like they're getting overgrown. Um, I would really cut on them hard. I would do it right now. It's a little bit late. Usually, I'd say the month of March, two days in April. Go for it. Back on that sucker. And then fertilize it with the all purpose plant food. And it'll look butchered for probably about a month. Eventually, those buds are going to really keep going, and you'll never know that you pruned it back real hard. That's really a recommendation, really, for, for Euonymus, uh, Agnes, Silverberries, Tony Asters. Don't prune them back at the new year. Wait a little bit later, because they look so rough when you prune them back real hard. You get all those, you see all those cut marks, which is not pretty. You wait till just before they start to bloom, or root, or grow, or start to take off in spring, which is typically April, cut them right 
cut them back right before they grow. So sometime in March. You know, they won't drive you as crazy. They won't look as bad. Anyway, fertilize all purpose plant food will recover quickly for you. Yeah. Yep. So if your peony is near a wall, when do you trim it back? So right now it's probably, it died back to the ground, right? So you just whack it off as soon as it's done. I mean, when it's brown, stick in there, I just whack it off. Whenever it's brown, I just cut it off. No good. Um, and I don't think you have to worry about the wall. The wall will actually help it. But some, <coughs> sometimes wind, you get so tall, they're so firm, so full, the wind can get them where they start to lean over. You need to stake them sometimes. A wall would actually help you from upright. I think they'll take that radiant heat just fine. Like some watering a little bit. So that's kind of the only thing we would watch. Do they even come close to answering what you what your question was? You can let it grow into the wall or trim it back, whatever you'd like. So either way, I don't think it's gonna make any difference to the peony. It makes it easier to get back there if you're painting the wall or something. Cut it back so you get back there and take care of it. Anytime you want. Yeah, what the book says, I'm just quoting the book, garden books, you can prune 10% of foliage mass of any plant anytime you want. Wait to prune heavy pruning to winter, typically. Um, except for things that grow bloom in spring. Main talking shrubs, lilacs, recipient plants. Because when you, like a lilac, they've been setting their buds since August, September. You could prune them back now, and it would not affect the plant at all. But you would not get to enjoy any of your flowers. You just cut them all off. So wait until the spring things, you know, will say, wait to prune those till right after they're done blooming. Enjoy the flower first, then prune it. Um, and then cut it back up to a third of the foliage mass. So fruit trees, a third of the foliage mass. Big limbs, though, just one limbs leaning out, digging in the forehead every time you go to the front door that's irritating you're going to get a chainsaw so i don't have to duck you can do that anytime you want so with the heavy pruning you're doing the winter activity okay good, good great question yep same with shrubs shrub is a big red tip botanium go back to patricia um if you need to if the thing's too close to the house just cut it back so you can get back there because it will it'll it'll like engulf your your entire house million dollar house and you can't see a thing through the windows because the red tip are like all over so it's like they should not be planted close to the house so okay i'll hang yeah jeremy is there one last question online just for you folks on facebook and we know you're there <laughs> gotcha so Part of the game with retail today, you can't just have a store, you can't just be online, you gotta have a hybrid. So we're trying to figure out how to show all this inventory online. And we got it, we got it down. So watersgardencenter.com, it's not a very original name, but there it is. You go there at the front of the, front of the uh, there's a big shop button, it takes you to the store. Or if you want a shortcut, and I can't believe no one bought these URLs. I taught, I, I bought all the top 10 names, top 10 roses, top 10 plants, top 10 fruit trees, top 10 flowers, top 10 perennials, top all the top 10s. I bought them all. They're already worth like 10 times their value because you're starting to get some traffic. It's like real, it's like an invest, like real estate. Uh, anyway, you can go top 10 plants. It'll take you shortcuts right to the, to the shopping cart. And then literally, my back, my staff is so good. They're just amazing. My staff is amazing. My back office. They'll put a purchase order in as it's being unloaded. You can almost see the inventory as it's on the dock. It'll upload every single morning. The only negative, you folks online, so you'd be better off being in here. It gets uploaded in the morning. This is where it's kind of its weird thing yet. So you're competing with people that are actually here at the class. And they get first dibs. I only got three trees. There's three people that want them, and you see it online. It says we got three. They're all sold. So 
there's this few hours during the day when if you're here and bought it, I don't care if you bought it online and said I paid for it, I'll give you your money back because I already sold it. There's this window and it's kind of you're competing with people on the sales floor. That's where retail and online has this weird, haven't figured out the hybrid piece yet. It's kind of so glitchy. It's a great way to do research. You want to know what size things get. Uh, we've got all the peonies. What colors? They're all listed here on your perennial. Not your flowers, perennial. You'll see them all right there. So the price, the size, it's all right there. And the sizes and how much sun our gardens need. We're trying to, we're trying to not use the national tags. We're trying to use what really grows in our gardens here in the mountains of Arizona. Yeah, but I live in Prescott Valley. I live in Chino Valley. All of them. We're all the same. We're all the same zone. Just because you live one block over does not mean you got a totally different way of gardening. We're all the same. So maybe Camp Verde, Will Hoyt, maybe is a zone warmer. Spring Valley, maybe. Really, they're just, they warm up two weeks before we do. I think the same garden information uh, counts for us. So it's a, it's a great local resource. Take a look at it. Thank you for asking. Uh, and with that, you can hang out, take a look at the plants, read tags, take pictures, grab them so I don't have to put them away, whatever you want, and I'll hang out and just answer questions for you. Thanks for coming. I'll let you clap before you go, just because the old actor in me kind of likes it. Thank you. All right. Get out of the way. <laughs> I think it's just an old, old bulb crate. We used to get daffodils and stuff in those. Like, so, yeah. Aqua Boost. I've been selling that for a lot of years. Aqua Boost. Yeah, Aqua.